Short-term price action is just that, short-term. That's the way I look at it. The stock market is extremely volatile, especially under these conditions. I've listened in on experts who've been involved in the stock market and financial markets for decades, and they are talking about how difficult this market is. So why are people surprised or shocked when they can't predict what's going to happen. I'm not sure why that surprises people. If you want to know exactly what's going to happen with the stock in the short term, short of being the biggest big dog in the room who is putting money in whatever direction they're putting it, I'm not sure how you could possibly know because big dogs control short-term price action and whatever they're doing is going to impact things in the short term. Long-term has been and remains my view for this company, for Neo stock. And my take on that, especially in including the bearish sentiment that we have from the market, is that long-term profitability is a key, a pivotal and important point. Um, and so that is probably out based on delivery and ramp up and things like that, possibly a year out, maybe longer. Um, again, it just depends on how things ramp up. So what that means for me is the short-term price action and all the things happening, positive, negative, the spin, the news narrative, all of it is just an opportunity for me to learn because there's one thing that I know, I can always learn more. There's always so much more to study and learn. And I, I understand why people get frustrated with the short-term stuff, but the mentality that Warren Buffett has is truly a long-term investor. And I believe he said don't buy something if you don't think, you know, or you don't plan on holding it for 10 years. How interesting would that be if we applied that to our own strategies? I personally don't want to apply that because I don't always think that way. And in fact, <laughs> to that point, I actually sold at a loss something else that I was hoping would go up short term so I could bring it back for more Neo bucks. What I ended up doing is it was down and I was like, you know what? I don't care. The Neo price action is too good. It's too low. I want to get what I can while I can. And so I swung out of it, took a loss just to get more Neo. And look, I'm I'm a small investor. TLM, I joke about it all the time. Too little money is one of my problems. I can't just buy the position I want. And so I didn't enjoy taking a loss, but I was glad to buy under $15 for Neo stock because for me personally, that's a crazy good deal. And that doesn't mean it can't go down more. It absolutely can. I'm not ruling anything out because... Short-term volatility is just that. It's short-term. It's up to the big money and whatever the big money is doing in the short-term. And I don't know what that's going to be. So rather than get all worked up or frustrated about that, I'm just kind of like, all right, what's the play for me? And, and that's the way I look at things. But again, this is long-term. It remains the long-term. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> and I know a lot of you aren't either. So this a video. I wanted to come back and do some uh, comments and catch up on some comments. There are a couple of videos I've gotten a little behind on the comments. And so I figured I would just jump back. Um, all right, let's go. Here we go. Uh, Shaban asks, uh, this is two minutes ago. So this is fresh off of my latest video where I, uh, I released and asked, is Neostock being manipulated or not? And then I shared about fails to deliver and things like that. Uh, Shaban asks, what's up with the lawsuit against Neo? What should we do now? I don't know what lawsuit you're talking about. I do know that I've seen a number of times where companies, attorneys, firms are sort of putting out feelers if they can possibly get a class action lawsuit together. Uh, my understanding for the way those typically work is you need five parties to sign on. So let's say they can find five people who have owned Neo stock who are upset about something they want to try and, and say that there is some uh, claim that they have that Neo has done something illegal. I'm kind of presuming this is one of the things you're talking about the lawsuit. Uh, if you're talking about the Audi lawsuit, I don't know that anything has happened with that, but even the others, these sort of proposed or attempted class actions, uh, there have been some that came up uh, in the last couple of years, they were dismissed. And so I, I don't really see it as anything for me personally. I, I don't even give it a second glance. Usually if somebody asks me to, and if you want to specify uh, and drop a specific case or firm, then I'll look at it. But generally each time that that has happened, I've been unimpressed with any of what they had going on. Uh, it's probably a good time for me to say, not an attorney, not a financial advisor. <laughs> uh, Jacob says, uh, that way I, I sold half of my Neo shares. It will be cheaper next year, three or $4. So Jacob calling the three or $4 level for Neo next year and plans to buy back in. Hey, as an investor, you got to do whatever works for you, whatever that looks like. And 
Heck, I just said earlier, I, I <laughs> took some losses just so I could get more Neo at these prices. So if you're selling Neo at these prices, you know, I just hope whatever you're doing is consistent with your own view and, and your goals. And, you know, good luck to all of us. That's all it is. Uh, Ramkey says, as much as I believe the company is really great, I think they expose the company to this kind of manipulation. Two years, no growth. November 2021 deliveries are exactly the same as September 22, 10 months of lead with no visible progress. Uh, even though under the hood, they are close to increasing deliveries. CEO recently said they need more time for ET5 ramp up, throwing any Q4 expectations out the window, which kind of left the stock and investors with no support. All right. Wow. I got to break this down into parts. The first part, I think it's a great point that you say as much as I believe in the company. That's my view. And in the longer term, no matter whatever the price action is doing, I'm just, and I try to stay pretty well uh, versed with what's going on with the company and with expansion and things like that. Uh, the company fundamentals are only getting stronger in my mind. And that's what I want to know. And if that's the case, then I'm good with it. Um, but I also have uh, risk tolerance levels that are probably way beyond most people. And so, you know, for others, maybe it doesn't make sense for them to do the same thing I'm doing, and that's okay. Uh, as far as the two years of no growth, I think uh, to ignore the expansion, including now they're well over a thousand, I think they're over 1160 with battery swap stations in China. They've got the battery swap plant now coming online in Hungary so that they can do that in Europe. And they've released three models this year. And I will agree, if you want to specifically focus only on deliveries, that's fair. And I know some other folks have also been frustrated with that. Um, I pointed out in one of my recent videos that it, it appears that from the original plant, they have got basically two of the new, uh, the three new models and the other models. So a total of five models being produced from that original factory. Do I want to see that 2X and double? Absolutely. And, and I'm hoping these last three months of the year is when we'll see that. But I also recognize that Neopark is just now coming online with the ET5. And the focus on that means that, and to your point about the ET5 ramp up and the suggestion that the CEO, William Lee, uh, is saying that we need to throw expectations out the window. Let's be clear about this. I believe it was 68,000 deliveries was the question asked by an analyst of Neo execs in the uh, earnings call. And, and they were just kind of like, whoa, you think you can do that? And he sort of walked back on that, even in the call, what he did say, and until, or unless he changes this, I think this is what I'm expecting personally. He said, expect monthly delivery records each of the last three months of the year. And I do think that is both realistic and achievable. And I think we'll see it. Uh, how big those numbers are, I don't know. But even at, I mean, they just did a record for the quarterly deliveries of just over 30, what, 31,000, I think roughly. Now, even 50,000 is a significant uptick from that in a single quarter. So that would alone be a big jump. But the fact that the analysts were asking about the high 60s and he wasn't saying no to that makes me think, wow, there's a lot of leeway here. So let's just see what happens. Uh, Royce says, uh, the stock is being manipulated. Thanks for manipulated. Thanks for your insight. And yeah, I was curious with this video, what, what people would think and how many folks would think that there's manipulation going on. Um, you know, all we can do is speculate. Uh, we can't really prove it anyway, but, uh, but I was curious. I'm always curious to hear from you all. Roman, what's up? Says, all I can do is laugh and buy a few more at these ridiculous levels. I know what I hold and I know what's coming. And yes, I think naked shorting is definitely a thing that is happening. Berlin day. And of course that's Neo day coming up. I'll be live streaming. It can't wait. It's going to be fun. Cutie pie. Uh Oh, cutie pie says I'm upset in the sad face. I'm sending you a virtual hug right now. Cutie pie, big hug from the Neo family. Um, and you know what? Tell me what I want. I want to know specifically why are you upset? And because you think there's manipulation going on because of stock price action, because uh, of, um, shorter term, maybe you've got contracts you're, you're playing in this. I don't know. You know, talk to me. Um, give me more. I'm, I'm curious to know. Um, Arthur, uh, says a thousand percent manipulation, China bashing. Uh, that's kind of always in play. It seems like Ooh, it's crazy out here. Uh, Daniel says, you better watch what you're talking about. I, I, it's true. How dare I challenge, uh, things like I did saying there could be manipulation going on. <laughs> 
TV says, of course, it's manipulation. No catalyst and drops 7% and 30% in two weeks. Thieves. You know, it's, it's so crazy because when you looked at when I looked at today, I looked at the markets overall, was kind of monitoring and then looking at Neo and it was just trading so different from everything else. And I was just thinking, and, and frankly, I think it's more likely and we won't know for, maybe we'll find out tomorrow, the next week or so, I would expect us to, to get a sense of this. I think it's more likely that rather than naked shorting going on right now is there might be big money seeing the opportunity and the time frame and going, all right, it's time to buy some of this. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if the suppression of price was to push it down so that big money could get long. I, I'm kind of more in the camp of that and expecting that to be the case, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> Daniel catching fish. Uh, what's up, buddy? Uh, yeah, I know this is from my last uh, video, which was yesterday. I, I dropped this video talking about political pump or dump incoming. And uh, and I was I just talked about with midterms and the optics and everything being so weak in the US, I expect you now there's one thing about politicians from both sides. They can talk all the noise about each other that they want, but the optics matter and they want things to look and feel good. All right. And so I, I'm just thinking that in general, we will get a pump of the markets sometime between now and the end of the year. So that's kind of what I talked about in, the, in that video. Uh, and it looks like it's not really getting much play, maybe because I didn't uh, put Neil on the title or maybe because folks mistakenly thought I was being political on one side or another. Uh, another. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, but yeah, I says, uh, and I like this, I think he's joking here. When Emperor Xi takes charge, will Neo House turn into Red Guard House? Laugh out loud. And I appreciate the humor. It's always nice to have that uh, in the comments. And you'll get that from me sometimes too, because I don't want to be too serious all the time. Uh, Omar, uh, and this is from yesterday, said, I just met another soul the other day who is a retired banker. And the advice I was given is that the markets always bounce back with pure confidence in their voice. That simply made me feel even more confident in my decision with the market. So Aaron or whoever is reading this, take some advice and be patient. Life tests us and I have a thousand percent in Neo and Asia. Um, remember, rough roads lead to steps. And you know, it's funny because Omar, shout out. Um, I One of my sayings is baby steps to greatness. I think it's just a lot of, a lot of little steps combined that make us better. And yes, problems, challenges, that's part of life. It's craziness is going to happen. There's going to be volatility in life. And so it's just kind of how you navigate that. Um, and then Omar talking about buying some, uh, <laughs> and, uh, Renee says with higher gas prices and interest rates, I wouldn't be surprised if we see an earnings recession in early 2023. My buddy Caddy has been talking about the earnings and saying that's a critical point. Uh, there's another one or two folks I follow on Twitter uh, because they're really focused on the macro aspect, and that's sort of what they're watching as well. One of them, I think, was was talking or suggesting nine to twelve months for the market to come back. Um, and I don't know, you know, we'll see. That's always it's just so it's a really fascinating time to be alive. Uh, really blessed to be out here and able to study and and try to observe and learn things. So uh, and share some of it here. Arnett says, "Rough year, rough almost two years. This baby has been dropping since January 2021." You know, uh, has it been a full two years? Not yet. Let's check back in January and see what's up. January 2023. Let's revisit that, Arnett. Uh, but I feel your pain. If you're frustrated and venting, I, you know, I hope uh, things get better for you. Uh, Math Guy says, I also think we will have a small rally all the way to December. Then next year, stocks will crash and I will buy more. <laughs> that's funny. And you know what? I think that's a better lens to take. There's so much fear mongering going on and the FUD spreading and just everybody be scared. Everything's terrible, horrible, whatever. You know, my thought is sort of more like this analytical and also from an, a long-term investment standpoint, I'm like, all right, so where are the opportunities? And what do I want to do if let's say short-term things are bad? All right. What if longer-term things are bad? All right. You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh, how, how am I going to move as an investor? That's the way I want to look at things. Um, and, and more uh, logic and less emotion. Uh, CD says Biden's reg regime, these tyrants will do whatever to remain in power. It's, you know, I try to avoid the politics, which is really ironic and crazy since I talk about a Chinese based stock and I can't even vote here in the U S how crazy is that? Huh? Uh, Charlie, what's up? Says Aaron, my take, it's almost impossible to predict anything in this volatile market. And that's a great point. I agree, Charlie in a bear market shorts own it and short every single pop. Tech is out of favor and China is very out of favor. China stocks have too much political turmoil right now. 
Taiwan, the CVID, chip supply, China real estate, global recession, EV demand, soft, Ukraine, Russia, nuclear. And here's, I will say this, a lot of those things that are being touted or put out by Western media as weak points are not weak or are as, are not as weak in China. And that's one of the reasons I'm long on this company uh, is I have more confidence in the positioning longer term of this company because of that market uh, and because of what they can do in that market. So uh, Neo needs to prove they can hit numbers. Uh, oh, I kind of skipped one, but that's all right. We'll keep, we'll keep it moving, Charlie. Uh, Neo needs to prove they can hit numbers and show growth soon or it will get ugly. And you know, that's a fair point. Again, you know, uh, somebody else had talked about that. They're wanting to see that uptick of delivery numbers um, for example, and they're not really caring so much about the expansion behind the scenes, the expansion of the battery swap stations, the positioning, all those things, they're not sexy. They're not exciting. So with a company that's not yet profitable, I get it. Um, talking about, uh, he, he goes on to talk about XPV uh, and bio stocks that he's happy about. Uh, he says, good luck, my friend. You are the only YouTuber I watch anymore. All the others I don't like because they're fear titles. Oh, thank you. I was just talking about the fear mongering. <laughs> Keep in touch. You have my email. Uh, also, I remember reading somewhere a while ago that stock market does better when there are opposite political parties in the White House and Senate and Congress. Interesting. That's a good fact. Good factoid. Somebody check that out. Let me know if that's, I bet uh, Caddy's already on that. Um, and knows what's up with that. So I'm thinking if there's a change in Senate or Congress with different political party than White House, it may rally markets hard. It's not favored in the market when there's too much control of one party. It's an interesting uh, overview. And yeah, let's see what happens. Uh, Ted A says, <laughs> you will get my prediction when we get your end of year price prediction. Ah, touche, Ted. Uh, I've been saying all year in 2022, because of my concern overall with the US stock market and the weakness that I believed we would see from that, I did not want to put a price uh, prediction out for Neo stock. I still have it all year, um, mainly because I wanted to see how Neo would do relative to the market. And uh, sadly, we've seen it not do great. And so I guess sadly, depending on how you're looking at it, if you're looking to add, then you know maybe you're not sad about it. Maybe you're glad. Um, Asia Fish says pump till November 8th. He's calling it out and then uh, dumping after. So calling out the uh, political pump scenario. Jake says, and this is from a uh, previous video where I talked about the NEO numbers and whether they were good or bad. And I kind of, I, I gave and talked about the third quarter being a new record. And then I sort of gave some time stamps, some, some data points along the way that we've gotten from the company and sort of where it looks like we are. And then I gave my opinion on how I think about things at the end, which, you know, it's okay if you didn't want to watch that or listen to that. Jake says, in my feeble estimate, it's a supply chain issue, talking about NEO and deliveries, until we can work on getting the supply issue uh, handled, it, supply side issues handled here and around the world, we're going to continue to limp along. My philosophy is this stock is dead in the water for the foreseeable future. Therefore, if you can get it at a cheap price, you go ahead and take the DCA. That's dollar cost averaging for those who don't know. If you're at a $60 average, sorry, you're in for a long haul to get back even. You have the following options. One, sit tight and hope it comes back. And he says, it's not what I would do. And, and you know, for in fairness and disclosure, Jake's uh, is active trading in the market and he's long-term. I believe he's long-term on Neo for one at least. And then uh, he trades as well. Uh, so he's short-term and long-term, I think. Uh, DCA and increase your holdings. And uh, so that's his number two. Uh, three, take the loss and move on. Four, work on a trading strategy using DCA and options to bring your average down. And uh, and that's, you know what? I will never give financial advice, but those are some different options that, that Jake's has used and is using and suggests for others to consider. Um, and I'm not promoting in any way, shape or form. SEC, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Imre, what's up? Uh, says, uh, although the Neo stock is quite cheap now, according to its all time high, the stock price is still strongly affected by the market. I would hear your opinion about the most common market predictions. There will be a bear market rally starting soon this year, but after that, a 20% crash is coming regarding the, to the current prices of the indexes like the S and P 500. If this is likely, I need to sell my Neo shares, uh, soon and buy back later next year. Is it possible that despite the crashing uh, New York Stock Exchange stocks, NEO can at least stagnate due to the uh, quantitative easing in China and a possible CVID lockdown ease? I hope they won't start a war with Taiwan. So trying to decide what to do there. Uh, 
my take and the, and the view that I have, and there's, there's one guy and it, I've already kind of said and disagreed sort of with what he thinks, even though he's got a whole lot more market data that he has studied and his forecasting is suggesting that we have actually the worst time ahead here in October for the market. Uh, and then possibly into November, uh, my own view, and this is kind of what I shared in the video yesterday is that I think that we're going to get a political pump. I think that that matters enough and is sort of the more important thing for those folks is to have things look better maybe than they actually are, maybe have things not look so weak. The other is the Fed ultimately controls more of what is going to happen than anyone else. Ironically, they have also caused the damage, a lot of the damage that has put us in this position, but because they're not likely to own up to that anytime soon and because they may continue to make uh, poor decisions that negatively impact the rest of us, I, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Uh, my expectation is that if the stock market does continue down, and, and I do think overall we haven't seen the lows, um, whether that ends up being short term or longer term, meaning into 2023 um, and, and possibly beyond, uh, but I don't know that it matters. My belief is that NEO stock will eventually trade on its own. Do we have to wait for profitability? I don't know about that. Uh, and, and if shorts get caught in NEO and burned like they've been burned before, we could see the stock price absolutely go on a tear again. I'm not expecting that. I don't want to count on that, but I don't want to rule it out as a possibility. And, and you know, and, and so I try to consider all the options, all the scenarios. My thought is it's hard to imagine that with NEO coming in with bigger numbers and with the PCAOB um, finishing delisting, uh, not the delisting, but finishing the inspections and the auditing in China, that there will be some positive news or that there, you know, I expect, I guess, that we will get some positive news out of China. Now, will that be spun in a positive light? I don't know. And will big money also recognize the opportunity that is the Chinese market and get back in over there? I also don't know. I think if they're smart, they will. And that's why I say we might see, even with Neo not being profitable, we could see the brand and the company start to be recognized by more of the big money. Uh, and maybe we see some buying pressure and the price uh, stabilizes or starts to go up. Uh, but I think ultimately, you know, you always have to do what works for you. And you have to, I think when I'm looking at things, this is what I do. I consider both scenarios. For example, I moved out of some something else and took a loss to get Neo at this price because I I just I couldn't I didn't want to miss on this price, but I also realized it could go down lower and and so that's what it is and if it does then I'll try to come up with you know some more buying power. Um, that's my personal position and situation. You have to do what works for you, uh, but for me it helps to ask myself questions. So ask yourself the question: What if you do this? and this happens. What if you do this other thing and this happens? Just play out all the scenarios and then ask yourself what you'll be most satisfied with. I think that'll help give you some clarity with what you want to do. Um, and knowing that we can't predict, it's a, it's all up in the air. It's wild out there and we don't know how long it's going to be wild. So um, trying to factor that in to your risk tolerance, I think is key, whatever that looks like. Uh, Momentum Swing says ET5 is here. Accumulate as much as you can while shares are still cheap. It's going to be 15,000 to 20,000. Talk about deliveries for October. US economy, only thing holding the stock price down. Eventually, investors will see the disconnect. I think I would love to see those numbers. I'm going to be more conservative, but I do think they're possible for October. Uh, I'm expecting more of a 13 to 15,000 number to come in, which 13,000 is a new record for Neo. So I'll be happy with that. I want to see those new records each month to end out the year. And I want to see what big money does when that happens, especially if the stock market is still volatile or still sort of suspect, or if we haven't gotten that pump uh, that I do think we'll get before the end of the year. And maybe the pump will be really weak too. You know, it's, who knows? I don't know what to expect really. Uh, but it's fun trying to guess. Ken says, is Neo plant still working the first week of October? Believe it may be a holiday. It is a holiday. And yes, you are correct. Says, I think Tesla plants are working. I believe they both are. And shout out Marcel. I think he did a video on this. I have not been over to check it out, uh, but he's probably on point and already talked about it. So, uh, and, and I saw deliveries were getting done. Uh, some people with their new vehicles from Neo. So I do expect that everything is operating as normal. Uh, 
CJFM says, I love that they finally hit the milestone of 10K every month for a quarter, and now it is time for the ramp. I agree. And that was kind of my view was we had four months consecutively of 10,000 plus deliveries, meaning, and one of them was almost 13,000, meaning that that is the baseline for me. That is the low end. And that's nice to know. Uh, did I want to see it sooner? Yeah, absolutely. I want to see it last year and it didn't happen. So that's okay. It's where we're at. Uh, little Dean, what's up? Says, apparently there's a Chinese holiday first through the seventh. And yes, it is true. Uh, fortunately, Neo is still delivering and they're still doing Neo day in Europe. So, um, Alan Stevens, what's up? Says, uh, looking at it from a quarterly perspective, it's great. They set a new record. Next quarter, they will set another new record. You're right. Good point. At the end of this year, they will set a new yearly delivery record. Also a good point. The further out you look, the better the company's growth looks, period. Excellent point. And how interesting is it when we shift our view, our lens a little bit, instead of looking and being stuck in the current stock price action, which right now is below $15, or it was a, at least at the time of my attempting or starting this recording. Uh, how interesting. So many people are caught up in that right now. Instead of looking at that longer term lens of, wow, the company is maybe slowly or slower than some investors want, but they are building, growing, expanding. Stu says, Neo will push through all these choppy waters and make us rich. This company is representing China on the world stage and it will not fail. Uh, it says unless maybe sabotage, but will be successful. Patience will win. I like the positive and a great point too. This, this is really an important company for China. Uh, I think China wants to see this company win as well. James, what's up? Says, uh, this year doesn't matter. This year is only for people who want to invest, buy as much as you can while it is on sale. I keep telling everybody that. I know if you want to get involved in Neo, buy, 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 because next year Neo will start to go up. My prediction is to end this year, $20. This year, next year, $80 a share. 2024, 120. 2025, 150 plus. Ooh, wee. Let's, it's going to be fun. The journey is what I'm enjoying. I'm going to cut this thing short because I've gone on a while and gotten into some different videos. But first, let's see if there are any new comments because they did release a video just uh, shortly, a little while ago. And oh, we've got a few, a couple of them. Peter, was, what's up? Peter uh, says, fed up with the manipulation. So I've added on every dip. <laughs> I want to pin that comment. Wait, can I pin it from here? I'll have to come back and pin it because I'm not very good uh, at that stuff. Tech, it's a problem for me. Don't worry about it. Uh, I love that guy. That's funny. So I'm fed up with it. So I'm just buying every time. <laughs> I wish I could. I mean, I'm trying. Uh, Todd Peterson says, he who has the biggest pot of gold calls the shots. And that's, it's true. It's the short-term volatility. It's absolutely present in the market. And, and that's what it is. So big money is pushing things around in the short-term, long-term. Well, I'm going to stick around for it. I hope y'all are uh, going to stick around with me. No worries if you don't. You got to do what works for you. But let me wrap this thing up because how long did I go? Holy cow, long video. All right, I'm going to wrap this thing up and get it out. Almost a half an hour of me talking. Wow. But it's awesome. I love the interaction and, and the fact that I get to do this. Really, really blessed. Uh, and I am absolutely going to keep sharing uh, along this journey. That is life. It's crazy. It's wild. So many opportunities to learn and study and grow. I'm... I'm I'm just blessed, fortunate. So thanks all for being on the Neo train, as I like to call it. Hey, folks, get your seatbelts fastened because I know it's been a rumpy, bumpy, <laughs> rumpy, bumpy and rumpy ride lately. Uh, but long term, I truly believe we're absolutely going for a ride on this thing. Thanks. We'll see y'all again real soon.